University Challenge. Asking the questions, Jeremy Patman. Hello. Two teams are preparing to shake their intellectual tail feathers again tonight. Whichever puts on the better display will end up in the quarterfinals, while their rivals will fly off home. The School of Oriental and African Studies lost their first round match to Wolfson College, Cambridge, on a tie-break question, but then convincingly beat Durham University in the playoffs with a score of 270 to a mere 85. They knew about stereotypes, cyberspace, and species of the loris, and in the bonuses had clean sweeps on Roman history, the novel Hard Times, and the poster as art. With an average age of 44, let's meet them again. Hello, I'm David Bostock, I'm from Cheltenham, and I'm reading for a Master's in Southeast Asian Studies. Hello, I'm Magda Biran-Taylor, originally from Harrow, and I'm also reading for a Master's in Southeast Asian Studies. And this is their captain. Hi, I'm Henry Edwards, I'm from London, and I'm reading for an MA in Near and Middle Eastern Studies. Hi, I'm Odette Shalaby, I'm from London, and I'm also reading for an MA in Near and Middle Eastern Studies. The team from Emmanuel College, Cambridge, quickly dug themselves into the minuses in their first-round match against the University of Nottingham and were trailing for much of the contest, but managed to pull away in the dying minutes and won by 175 points to 135. They struggled with the Foresight saga, but they were better on Iris Murdoch and Ian McEwan and much better again on the works of George R. R. Martin. With an average age of 22, let's meet the Emmanuel team again. Hi, I'm Tom Hill, I'm from London, and I'm reading history. Hello, I'm Leah Ward, I'm from Oxfordshire, and I'm reading maths. This is their captain. Hello, my name is Bobby Seagull, I'm from East Ham in the London Borough of Newham. I'm studying for a Master's in Education specialising in maths. Hi, I'm Bruno, I'm from Monsworth in South West London, and I'm studying physics. Right, let's not waste any time with the rules. Let's just get on with it. Fingers on the buzzers. Here's your first starter for ten. Arnold Smith, Don McKinnon and Sonny Ramphill, representing Canada, New Zealand and Guyana, respectively, are among the former secretaries-general of which... Emmanuel Seagull. Um, NATO. Uh, I'm afraid you lose five points. Of which organisation? Suez Biran Taylor. The Commonwealth. Correct. Right, so as your first set of bonuses are on two-word terms whose first citation in the OED dates to the First World War. Identify each term from the description. Firstly, now used primarily in a metaphorical sense, a term that appeared in a British Medical Journal article in 1915, noting that a Belgian officer was the victim. Shell shock? Correct. Secondly, the part of a mechanical dial corresponding to recommended or safe conditions. It's also used for an area that is safe for forces to occupy during a military conflict. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, no, no, no. No, no, no. Green zone. Yeah. Green zone? Correct. Also used as a synonym for midnight, more generally the time when an important event such as a military operation is due to begin. Mm -hmm. Zero hour. Zero hour? Zero hour? Correct. Another starter question. Answer promptly. From the 1890s to the 1960s, several British politicians served in three of the four great offices of state. Name the two who served in the three offices of Home Secretary, Chancellor and Prime Minister. Both were prominent figures in the Liberal landslide of 1906. So Esperant Taylor. Churchill and Asquith? Correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on novels. The title in each case is a short pronoun. Firstly, which Booker long-listed novel by David Nichols centres on the marriage between the arts administrator Connie and the scientist Douglas as they embark on a grand tour of Europe? Us? Yeah. It is us. Us? Yeah. Yeah. Us? Correct. Secondly, Evgeny Zamyatin's works include which dystopian novel of 1924, which was itself an influence on Orwell's 1984? I need the English title. We? Oui. Correct. And finally, which 1986 novel by Stephen King features a shape-shifting monster whose different forms include a clown called Pennywise? It. Correct. 
Ten points for this. Which EU member state includes historical regions known in English as Kurland and Semigallia? Its principal river is the Daugava, or Western Davina, which flows into an inlet of the Baltic. So as Edwards. Finland. Anyone like to buzz from Emmanuel? Emmanuel Seagull. Estonia? No, it's Latvia. Another starter question. In physics, what is the significance of the number 299,792,000? Emmanuel Ward. The speed of light. In a vacuum, yes, that's right. <laughs> you get a set of bonuses on physics, Emmanuel College. Which Nordic physicist gives his name to a radius equal to about 5.3 times 10 to the minus 11 metres related to the mean distance of an electron in its lowest energy state from the nucleus of a hydrogen atom? Bohr. Bohr is correct. Also known as gyro radius, the radius of gyration of a charged particle in a magnetic field is sometimes known by the name of which British physicist born in 1857? Physicist. Direct much later. Is it Max Max Maxwell? No. Sorry. Rutherford. He's born in New Zealand. Um, British physicist. Uh, Who else could there be? Uh, just say John. Uh, Dirac. No, it's not Paul Dirac. It's Joseph Larmor. Oh. And finally, which German physicist gives his name to the critical radius that must be exceeded if light is to be able to escape from a gravitating body? Is it British, should I say? German. 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 Oh, um, Einstein, could it be? No, no, uh, it's... Uh, as in... Uh, it's in black holes, it's... Uh, do you know German? It's no. Just, it's going to say Einstein. Do you have anything else? Uh, sure, say so Einstein. Um, Einstein? That's a Schwarzschild yeah. oh, radius. Right. OK, ten points for this. In geography, what six-letter term identifies the lesser circle on which one will be standing if, at the summer solstice, the sun reaches the... Z Emmanuel Ward. Cancer. No, you lose five points. The sun reaches the zenith. So I said whips. Asimov. No, it's a tropic. Right, ten points for this. Subtitled The History of a Young Lady, which epistolary novel by Samuel Richardson is often cited as the longest... Emmanuel Ward. Clarissa. Correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on people associated with the city of Leeds. In each case, identify the person from the wording on the Leeds Civic Trust blue plaque. Firstly, a committed Christian, in 1953, she established the foundation that bears her name, the international charity devoted to the relief of suffering and giving affection to the unloved, regardless of age, race or creed. Like Sue Ryder... A second. Any, any other names? No. No. Sue Ryder. Correct. Oh. Which Frenchman is this? Quote, in 1888, he patented a one-lens camera with which he filmed Lee's Bridge. These were probably the world's first successful moving pictures. So, like, a guy called Deguer, Deguer but he's French. Just go for it, yeah. uh, Deguer? No, he was mainly associated with still photographs. No, it's Le Prince. Oh. And finally, the great propagandist of Victorian values through his book Self-Help, Character, Thrift and Duty, inspired by his lectures to Leeds working men in 1845. I don't know if Hardy is the person. Hardy is the person. I don't know. Uh, Hardy? No, it's Samuel Smiles. We're going to take a picture round now. For your picture starter, you're going to see the name of an ancient Greek thinker written in the modern Greek alphabet. Ten points if you can identify the thinker. Emmanuel Barton Singer. Archimedes. Correct. <laughs> now, following on uh, from Archimedes, you're going to see the names now for your bonuses of three more ancient Greek thinkers and writers, all written in the modern Greek alphabet. For five points each, I'd like you to identify them. Firstly... Xenophon. Xenophon. Yeah. Xenophon. Yeah. Correct. Xenophon. Secondly... Um, Heraclitus, yeah. Um, Heraclitus. Correct. And thirdly... Pythagoras. Yeah. yeah, Pythagoras. Well done. <laughs> Ten points for this starter question. Which French sociologist developed the concept of collective consciousness to describe how all members of society are united in a single system of values? Uh, Emmanuel Paul... Barton Singer. Uh, Durkheim. Durkheim is yes. correct. <laughs> Emmanuel, your bonuses are on Shakespeare's sonnets this time. In each case, give the words missing from these lines. 
In Sonnet 116, what two words complete the opening lines, let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments. Love is not love, which alters when it... Alteration finds. Yes. When... Alteration finds. Alteration finds. Correct. From Sonnet 130, what two words complete the first line, my mistress's eyes are nothing like... The what? The sun. The sun. Yes. And finally, what two words complete the first line of Sonnet 29? When in disgrace with fortune and... I don't know. No. And despair. No, it's men's eyes. <laughs> Ten points for this. In physiology, what term denotes the propulsive movement of the gastrointestinal tract, consisting of coordinated ah, waves... of Emmanuel contract... Hill. Peristalsis. Yes. These bonuses are on plant names, Emmanuel College, derived from the Latin meaning to twist the nose. What name has been given to a form of edible cress with a pungent smell and to the flowering plant, Tropelium magis? Uh, Tropelium is um, sunflower. Um, well, so is mean? it just... But wait, sunflower's not edible. Mean, wait, wait, no, so what's the... Related to cress, it's edible. Related to cress. Dill? Twist the nose. Latin. So what should I say? What it be? What could it be? Rhynchus is nose or Rink nasus. Oh no, Latin it would be nasus. But... Nasus, let's go for that. No, delphinium. I don't know, delphinium. <laughs> um, delphinium. <laughs> no, it's nasturtium, oh. as in nasus tortus. Okay. And secondly, originally grown for animal fodder and for seeds that were prepared as a vegetable dish, the name of which plant comes from the Latin for wolf like? Wolf like? Oh, um, that's lup lup lupin, yeah. It's just lupin, yeah. Just lupin, yeah. 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 Lupin. Correct. Which herb was used by the ancient Greeks as a burnt offering and derives its name from the Greek for sacrificial incense? Insects, like, is that like... Incense. Incense, incense yeah? Um, no, 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 just... Sacrificial, like, is it like o optra? Something optra, like lepidopter? No, 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 no,
No, it's Northern Ireland. Uh... Secondly, what was the average milk yield per cow per annum in 2013 to 14? <laughs> you can have a thousand <laughs> litres either way. So per cow, so <laughs> cow 365 days. How many would it do in a day? Like one, two litres, three litres per day? A thousand? It depends on the cow. Yeah. <laughs> so he said to the nearest thousand, yeah? Yeah. So let's go for... Two thousand? Two thousand. You know some very lazy cows. No, it's 7,717 <laughs> litres. <laughs> and finally, raw milk is milk that hasn't been pasteurised or homogenised and can only be sold directly to consumers rather than through shops. It's often known by what colour? That of its foil bottle tops. There's mm. these like blue milk and yeah, no, but mm. unpasteurized has got to, what color like got yellow milk? Red. Is it red? yellow? Is it? I don't um, think yellow. Red? They used to be red gold. bottle top. Gold. 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 There's gold tip. Yeah, I should drink okay. yeah. Yeah. Gold? No, it's green. Oh. <laughs> right, we're going to take a music round now. For your music starter, you'll hear an excerpt from a piece of music. For ten points, I'd like the name of the composer, please. Emmanuel Hill. Gershwin. Gershwin, Rhapsody in Blue, well done. <laughs> that 1924 version of Rhapsody in Blue was one of the first recordings chosen to be preserved in the National Recordings Registry of the US Library of Congress. Bonuses, excerpts from three more recordings from the registry, all were among the first inductees. Five points for each you can identify. Firstly, the singer of this song. <laughs> This land is your land. Woody Guthrie? Yes. Secondly, the performer and writer of this piece. Charlie Parker. Yeah, Charlie Parker. Yeah, Charlie Parker. It is Charlie Parker. Finally, give me the name either of the lead performer or of the group as a whole. This is. Grandma, Grandmaster and the Furious Grandmaster Five. Flash. Grandmaster Flash Grandmaster and the Furious Five. Five. Yeah. Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. Very good. Yes. <laughs> Ten points for this starter question. Born in New Jersey in 1909, which physician gives her name to a score introduced in 1952 that provides a swift assessment of the health of a child immediately after birth? So Esperan Taylor. Hapgar score. Apgar is correct, yes. Virginia Apgar. <laughs> Your bonuses are on work SOAS on the short list of academic books that changed the world compiled by UK publishers in 2015. Name the author in each case. Firstly, the 1792 work of Vindication of the Rights of Women. Wollstonecraft. Yeah, Mary Wollstonecraft. Mary Wollstonecraft. Yeah. Correct. Secondly, the 1962 work Silent Spring. Rachel Carson. Rachel Carson. That was correct. Finally, the 1949 work, The Second Sex. Simone, Simone de Beauvoir. Yes. Right, ten points for this. <laughs> Mirandesi is an officially recognised minority language of which country of the European Union? It's spoken primarily in the northeast, in the region around the town of Mirando do Duro. So as Edwards. Spain. Anyone like to bus from Emmanuel College? Emmanuel Barton Singer. Uh, Italy. No, it's Portugal. Ten points for this. What six-letter word links a drama series broadcast by BBC Four and described as the Sweeney in the Bonlieu with a plane curve that winds around a point while moving even farther from that? Emmanuel Barton Singer. Spiral. Spiral is right. <laughs> right, your bonuses are on chromosomal proteins, Emmanuel College. Which protein complexes are required for the condensation of chromosomes to make them more compact? Do we know? I didn't understand any of those so I words. say something? Rubisco? Yeah. <laughs> Rubisco. No, it's condensins. Similar in shape and composition to condensins, which protein complexes hold sister chromatids together? Protein mm. complex holds chromatids. Protein complex... What say mean? transposons. Yeah. Transposons? Transposons, no, they're cohesins. Oh, no. Separase is a protease that helps to remove cohesin from sister chromatids at the onset of which mitotic phase, thus allowing chromatid segregation. Oh, so this is like G1 or something, isn't it? I mean, there's a telephase. Telephase. Telephase? No, it was anaphase. Oh. Ten points for this. Which tree links a fictional poet in A.S. by its possession? the most prominent family in Scots, the Bride of Lammermoor, 
and the title character of Ford Maddox Ford's The Good Soldier. Emmanuel Barton Singer. Uh, the Ash Tree? Yes. <laughs> right, bonuses this time on symphonic music for you, Emmanuel College. Completed around 1858, Richard III is a symphonic poem by which composer, the founder of the Czech National School of Music? Smetana. 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 Smetana is right. Premiered in 1888, what was the last of Tchaikovsky's symphonic poems based on Shakespeare and other literary sources? So, S um, who, who's it, like Otello? Well, other literary sources, so it would be something like... Mac um, no. what, what has other literary sources? I mean, like, Prince of Crowfell, Women and Julia. Midsummer Night's Dream doesn't come from anything else, though, Yeah, because there's a little bit of Vega. Right? So, has it got oh, from Midsummer Night's Dream? Yeah. Midsummer Night's Dream? No, it's Hamlet. Oh. Which German composer wrote Macbeth, an 1888 symphonic poem after Shakespeare's play? His other works in the genre include Don Quixote and Don Juan. German, so there's Wagner... What was the date? 1888, Wagner's... Uh, I mean, it could be Wagner, Wagner or Strauss. Wagner makes sense. I haven't heard I of it. I don't think it is Wagner. It says Strauss. Strauss, the... Yeah. Which one? Richard Strauss. Say Richard Strauss. Richard Strauss? Richard Strauss is correct. Okay. Okay. We're going to take another picture round now. For your picture starter, you're going to see a photograph of a national capital. For ten points, I want you to identify the city. Emmanuel Barton Singer. Uh, Sophia. No. So as one of you, Buzz. So as Biran Taylor. Oslo. No, it's Quito. Mm. So picture bonuses in a moment or two. Ten points for this. Answer promptly and give all three of the rhyming words that mean a young horse, the insectivore Talpa europea, and a rodent whose British species. So as Biran Taylor. Foal, vole, and stole. Nope. No, sorry. Emmanuel Barton Singer. Uh, Foal, mole and vole. Correct, yes. <laughs> I'm afraid you had to lose five points, of course, Sir, for that. So you get the set of bonuses, Emmanuel College, on uh, UNESCO cities. The city of Quito was named as one of the first World Heritage Sites in 1978. Your bonuses are three more cities which appear on UNESCO's World Heritage list. This time, all three are in Europe. Five points for each one you can identify. Firstly... Bratislava. Bratislava. That looks a bit like the castle, no, like, but I'd, I'd Budapest. Budapest? No, it's not. It no, it's not. Like what should we go for? Bratislava. Go for Bratislava. Skopje, maybe? Try Bratislava. Bratislava? Bratislava? No, that's Toledo. Secondly... Toledo? Oh, my God. Is that... Is that like Salzburg or Vienna? Is it like Austria? It looks quite Austrian. Is it Austrian? Yeah. I'm looking at that, like... It reminds me of the sound of music. Salzburg? No, that's Luxembourg City. Oh. And finally... Okay, I need to go there. <laughs> Where is this? And... Is oh, that, look, at that, that, look at that. Is that Bath? Bath? Yeah, that look is. Could be. I think it does look a bit... Yeah, it does look like Bath. Cousins? OK, we're going closer to home. We think it's Bath? It is Bath, oh. yes. <laughs> right, ten points for this. What term did the Italian Marxist Antonio Gramsci ah. adopt? Emmanuel Segal. Cultural hegemony. Yes, that's correct. All we needed was hegemony, but you've got it. So you get a set of bonuses, this time on the 19th century. In each case, give the precise year in which the following occurred. All three questions have a six-word clue to a year that ends in the number six. Firstly, Democrat Van Buren beats Whig Harrison. 56, 46... No, 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 no. It's much Buren earlier. Is at 30... It's much earlier. It's at 36. Um, Buren was around... I think 26. Really? I think 26. OK. 1826? Yeah. Just 26, yeah? Not 36? Mm. <laughs> 22 or 26? Yeah, 26? No, it was 1836. Oh. <laughs> Second Opium War, Britain bombards Second Canton. 56. It's definitely 56. Okay. That makes sense. 56. 1856 is right. Germany good. and Britain partition East Africa. Oh, so it must be 86, because there's a conference of Berlin around there. So 86. Okay. 86. 1886 oh. is right. <laughs> Ten points for this. Which pre-20th century composer is associated with the soundtracks of the 1967 Swedish film Elvira Madigan and the 1980... So as Bostock. Mozart. Mozart is correct, yes. <laughs> Your bonuses are on film directors of the silent era. Born in Vienna in 1885, which director is especially noted for the 1924 film Greed? In Jean Renoir's 1937 film La Grande Illusion, 
He plays a German prison camp commandant. Uh, von Stroheim? Correct. Which US director's films include Our Daily Bread and The Crowd? He's perhaps best known for the 1925 anti-war film The Big Parade. Pass. It's King Vidor. And Intolerance, Orphans of the Storm and Birth of a Nation are works by which director, Griffiths. born in Kentucky in 1875? D.W. Griffiths. Correct. Ten points for this. Answer as soon as your name is called. In chemistry, what is the oxidation state of nitrogen in nitric acid? Uh, Emmanuel Barton Singer. Um, five. Specifically? Uh, plus five. Plus five, of course, yes. <laughs> Right, your bonus is this time Emmanuel College are on French literature. In each case, identify the Nobel laureate from the list of their works. Fruits of the Earth, The Counterfeiters and The Pastoral Symphony are works by the 1947 winner. Name? Wait, 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 French, wait, French Nobel winner, 1947. Mm. Camus? Um, oh. Roland? Come on, let's have it, please. Roland? Roland? No, it's André Gide. Secondly, oh. The Stranger, The Plague and That's The Fall Camus. works by the... Camus. Correct. Finally, The Interrogation, The Giants and Ritornello of Hunger works by the 2008 winner. The one you mentioned on the train. Oh. Uh, <laughs> 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 the train. Uh, no, that was she's German. Oh wasn't yeah, she? of no, course. No, no, no. Um, oh, Muller, no. Hertha Muller. No, that's she was 2010. Um, that's 2009. Let's go for another German name. Um, no, no, no. It no, wait, um, what, 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 why are we talking 2008. about? 2008. They... German. Oh, I can't remember the name. No, what? What's that? It's entertaining you trying, to, oh. seeing you trying Schmidt. to recall what you said on the tr train, but it's not getting us anywhere. <laughs> it's the Clezio. Oh. Right, ten points for this. Name either of the two contiguous inland U.S. states admitted to the Union in 1792 and 1796. They share a border of more than 400 miles along an almost straight line. So I shall be. Tennessee. Correct. Yes, Kentucky's Kentucky. the other one. <laughs> well done. Right, your bonuses this time are on the 1919 Treaty of Versailles. By the Versailles Treaty, Germany ceded the districts of Malmedy and Eupen to which country? Belgium. Correct. Germany also lost much of West Prussia and Upper Silesia. These territories came under the rule of which newly independent state? Poland. Correct. Following a plebiscite, Northern Schleswig rejoined which country? Denmark. Denmark. Correct. Ten points for this. Her novels are the maxims of La Rochefoucauld set in motion. These words of lamp producer Raphael Rutherdon, Sirs have 130, Emmanuel College Kings have 195. Well, you did pretty well, sir. So, uh, so, so there's no shame in going out with 130 points. Uh, but we have to say goodbye to you. Emmanuel College, congratulations. We should look forward to seeing you in the quarterfinals of the contest. Congratulations. Thank you. I hope you can join us next time for another second round match. But until then, it's goodbye from the School of Oriental and African Studies. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. It's goodbye from Emmanuel College, Cambridge. Goodbye. Bye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. Bye.